This is As of Late Podcast. It's your boy Titus, and we got Nadia Ninfo. What's going on with your girl? Hey, how y'all doing? Chilling, chilling. Good to have you. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm a little <laughs> nervous today. Don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. We got the. We tried to get the nerves out. We talked a little bit beforehand, but you know, like I told you, it's still. It comes natural. It's just nerves. Yeah. We all got them. If you don't got them, that means you ain't living. You know, you ain't alive if you don't. No, got no, that's them. right. Yeah. How are you though? How was your week? My week was pretty good. I just worked. Mm. And I just work a lot, so that work grind. Yeah, yeah. trying to grind, trying to stay busy. Mm-hmm. Same here, same here. It was a, it was a busy week work wise, but we got it done. You mm-hmm. know, glad to have a day off and and really sit back and get to know you a little bit. So, um, born and raised here. I'm born and raised in Charlotte. Okay, Charlottean. What side of town? Well, I grew up on the north side, and then. Raise your, thumbs up. The- Raise your thumbs up. Raise your thumbs up. I'm just like, <laughs> what, what thumbs like this? Yeah, you, you never heard that song. No. <laughs> and then I moved to the west side. So okay, okay. That's where I reside on the west side. Word, word. So did you go to school on the north side and then? Yeah, I went to Mallet Creek and then um, I was failing like pretty much all my classes. So they like put me on a program to where I could graduate on time. So mm. I went to Hawthorne, and it was like a school with like people who were pregnant i know a hot on them that's where where people that was pregnant i was a problem uh, child i was about to say niggas that's banging on niggas go to hot on yeah <laughs> i know about it used to be um something else it used to be not hot on it was another one that started with like an m i can't remember marie g davis i don't know it was some. it might have been that but uh that was the original spot because, like, I know for a fact, you going to Mallet Creek, I'm older than you. Because yeah, <laughs> Mallet uh, Creek, Creek was new. Yeah, Mallet Creek wasn't in the picture. Like, my nephew, uh, Sol- uh, shout out to Solomon, went to Mallet Creek, and he's a youngin. So you got to be in probably, like, your, what, I'm guessing your 20s. Like, yeah, I'm 28. 28, okay, mm. yeah. So you're not too far off. But, dang, Mallet Creek been out that long? Yeah. Dang, that's what's up. Yeah, 28. I'm 33, so we ain't that, not as far apart as I thought. Yeah. But I'm to the point where I knew Mallet Creek was non-existent. It was um a lot of people was either going to Vance at that time. Yeah. Or uh, Gander that stayed around that area. Yeah. But yeah. Um so bouncing back, never never been around the east side really? A little bit. I had an ex boyfriend that used to live over here. I used to be at his house all the time. So I used to drive thirty minutes to come over here, but Oof. other than that, not That's really. <laughs> That's love right there. That's love. <laughs> That may that may be the reason why um, we get we get songs like "Don't Call My Phone" because of exes like that. <laughs> yeah, he probably I, saying that. Don't call my phone. Oh, oh, so it's the other way around. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I definitely want to get into that project because um, listening to it with just with the titles like that. I was like, who um broke who um broke this girl's heart to where she mad at this nigga? <laughs> Dad going, you weren't playing out there out west. Now, wh- like, were you just before I get into it? Like, were you out west or were you talking about literally west side of Charlotte? Were you talking about west side? No, about I was Coast? actually out west. Um, so I I'm a little like neurotic and I don't I'm impulsive and I do stupid shit. What so is at, what does neurotic mean if you don't mind me asking? I don't know. What like a little mentally unstable. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that means. A little bit, a little bit off there. Yeah. So basically, I um, met this guy off um, Instagram, and um, me and him like we're friends. And he invited me to come out there. He had got me a job and everything, so I went out west to live. And things fell apart within like three weeks, but I just went and recorded that song i mean that album wild on the west yeah dang that's gangster that's gangster. yeah <laughs> and with the last 200 dollars i had because he told me i had to leave within like three weeks so i just went out there recorded it and came back with it so wow. i just named it out west dang that's dope yo that's dope i mean they probably went dope at that moment you going through like hell the no stuff going, but <laughs> Looking back on it, like kind of like what we talked to, talked about before the interview, like you don't like going through certain situations, but that EP can be like a process of healing for a lot of people, like yeah. for especially females that's going through similar situations or people like myself that like been in long distance relationships. Like I had a situation like that where it was like I met a I met a girl through Instagram. Um, went out west It didn't work out Brought my ass right back, back To the east side so, <laughs> But this was San Diego And so like I, I can re- I can relate that But it's a that. memory That you hold right mm-hmm. And I, I don't it. take nothing from it You know yeah. like Even like It's certain things Where it's like 
you'll go through certain triggers where it's almost like PTSD for certain things because it'll it'll try to bring trauma. But at the same time, I try to do a good job of like bringing out the good of certain. Bringing yeah. out the good of those moments instead of the dramatic moments, like. Yeah. But all my exes, like I could, it was a time where I couldn't sit in a room with them because, like, I was just still holding, like, harboring over pain of like past. And but I'm at a place right now where it's like I I've taken the good with that and I've taken the bad. Yeah, you, know, you where, transmuted it. Mm-hmm. Right. In, in similar times, I would just take the bad, be like, oh man, she was an asshole. It was just like the good of it now would be like, man. I wouldn't have known how to do certain like vocal stuff if it wasn't for her. Like or like that girl taught me about taxes, you know, like you so like mm-hmm. <laughs> No, that's you, true. You take what you learn from the people and you move forward. And um I could definitely sit in a room with all of them now because I'm at a place of peace and so that takes time, that takes growth. Mm-hmm. And so I, I believe it's needed for everybody is just to have that growth and really just letting stuff go because it's it's a waste to it's not harboring on nobody but you. Yeah. You know, that toxic stuff like we talked about previously. Yeah. You keep that stuff inside, it, it's it's hurting you, it's damaging yeah. you. Yeah, I feel that way too. I just, I don't know. I feel like when you start going through a lot of things in life, you just, you learn to take the blessing within things. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that situation, yeah, it didn't end the way I wanted it to, but there were so many blessings in it and I transmuted it into something beautiful. So I don't harbor any ill feelings, but... I wish I would be out there now, but I mean that wasn't what was meant to be. So yeah, I got an EP out of it. Mm-hmm. So you got an EP at it, at it. <laughs> you got an EP <laughs> out of it, and like that was just at that time it didn't work out. You know, they, yeah. it, it could be. I have plenty. The world does it like that. The universe does it like that. Well, you'll have these full circle moments where it's just like you'll come back. It could be three, four years from now, and you you be out there established even more mm-hmm. with your camp. And you like, yo, man, I remember when I first came out here, like, telling them the story at lunch or something about going there for a nigga and, and it not working out. But the therapy of that was out west. And, yeah. like, you know, like, that was therapeutic um, for you to get that stuff out and, and, and bring it into, like, something that's a solid EP. As opposed to a lot of people, um, they don't know how to be therapeutic in certain ways. And so expressing themselves may go to the point of going to the bar every night or you know fighting with their like wife or spouse you know what i'm saying like people don't I've know i've been there too yeah i mean like you take all you take all that stuff you know like we all go through those places just like venting in different ways but i try to do it in a way now where it's not all that you know like instead of like going to a bar and like i've gone to bars like when i was in toxic mind frames like i've gone to bars with the intention of like i'm gonna get drunk and i wish somebody would do something <laughs> like 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 for for sure like i'm just being honest cuz i would be so mad during that day like when my homie died like i went out there on a like i i remember it's like it was yesterday cuz it was like snug harbor and um they were doing you know sundays they do like karaoke and yeah. shit and i went out there like i was so mad that he passed away i was already drinking at the crib when i found out and then I went out there because somebody else was out there like, yo, man, meet me out there, man. Because he was telling me about the news of Buddy passing away. And I was like, man, I'm going out there. Like, I I, I just want to kill something, to be honest with you. I was just like on some, like, destruction path. I was just like, anybody say anything. Because I was at a place where it was just like some of the people that I ain't really fuck with at that time, I know they harbored around that way anyway. I was like, if I see this nigga, this is the day to see this nigga. And so it was just like. That was how I was, that was therapy for me, releasing it in that sense. Like, some people go through, like, you know, going to strip clubs and, like, feeling feeling that emptiness void with, um, you know, giving money out to people and, and, you know, having exotic dancers and stuff like that. Some people buy their stuff to where it's, like, they're they're addicted to, like, um, you know, buying stuff and buying fashion stuff. And they'll still have that void on the inside of them. And so mm-hmm. everybody has their different type of ways of, like, coping and therapy. So it's dope that you have it, um, like you were saying, that we have it in a realm where it's positive. Yeah. Because, like, it's so many different avenues that you can go that can be toxic. Yeah. I've been there. I've been there. Uh, um, I don't know. I, I've been through drug addiction or something I'm still dealing with now. And um, sometimes I do indulge in stuff that's not healthy. And I hate that for me. But I'm learning to make my creativity my vice and not look to drugs and pills and all types of things to, Mm -hmm. you know, 
release whatever I feel inside. And that's, it's a work in progress. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, one day at a time, you know. Yeah. It got me to a point to where it's like, every situation that I've had with drugs, like, I had to stop. Like, like that's that's one thing that I'll say. Like, any situation with God, when it was like, I, I stopped doing drugs, like, it wasn't because of my own will. Like, it was because either, even with drinking, like, I got to a point where it was just like, I was getting infections. And it was just like, yo, they were like, yo, you got to slow down from drinking, dog. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I was getting, like, um, fainting and, like, getting, like, hot, thinking I'm having heart attacks, but I was having an infection. That's how bad the infection was, where mm. I had to go to the emergency room. And it was just like, bro, like, it was that year I was telling you when my homie died to the yeah. point they were like, you have to calm down from drinking. And so I remember I was just like, I'm just going to dead it all because I, I can't. I either, I either got to go to the left or go to the right. I, I got an addictive personality. I can't go in the middle. Like, I can't just have a drink because a drink me for me going to go, it's going to go to 10. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, if I'm going to do this, I got to just end everything. It was the same with like pills. And like, I got to a point where it was just like the most least thing I think that would affect me was weed. But that was the thing that almost killed me because somebody dad going to um, put fentanyl in my weed to where it was just like it about killed me because of what fentanyl does to people. And, and they laced my weed to the point where. I almost died, I almost overdosed, and and it took that moment for me to be like, I stopped trusting people. Like I was just like, now of course the times have changed. You probably get weed, you know, dispensaries, and like this is when you still had to. Um, we in a state where you still got to ask niggas for shit, and so yeah. <laughs> you don't know where this nigga getting this shit from, and mm-hmm. so like that's the case that happened to me to where I was just like, I don't trust, I don't trust anything. Like I don't trust myself around that stuff. But I say that to say, um, my will didn't come from something just clicking and just like i gotta stop like the wheel sadly all of my scenarios came from me being I was, pushed to yeah stop. I, I was pushed to the point of stoppage if not it would have ended my life yeah and so god forbid of course i'm not saying that's gonna get you to a level like that at all like nowhere near me but if you're already one thing i'll say about it though like with drinking it was like this i already mentally knew it was time mm-hmm. like you know when it's time mm-hmm. like and so if you're in that mind frame where you feel like mm, I'm getting there, you it's only a matter of time you're going to you're going to stop on your own will. Like, yeah. And so that's that's the good stage about what you're talking about is like you already know, like, mm, I don't need to do too much of this. Having that mental state already. Because some people, they ignore that, you know, yeah. they ignore that to the point of just like. I think it's too realizing that you have a problem with things. Sometimes we just look at things as little vices here and there, but. I feel like once you get to the point where it's like, I can't function without something, Mm -hmm. like I can't get through my day without being high or, you know, I'm numbing myself constantly and I can't be productive. That's when you need to be like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And I feel myself more coming into that mindset of like, oh, this is this is not helping me. Mm -hmm. It's hurting me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times you don't realize because things gradually increase it might just go it might just start as you going out to the bar every now and then but then you get bad news and you're drinking like a whole bottle of liquor that's how it was for me mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not funny but i, I mean, mean it's real keeping it that's real like that's, that's usually it. how it starts though right like yeah and it, it only takes one traumatic instance for you to just be like yo let me just get two bottles i just want to get fucked up mm-hmm. and then next thing you know every week you're doing that yeah so. I gradually seen like when I start looking back, I seen the progression. And that's that's another thing. Like you said, like um, if you can't go a day without it, that's a problem. Mm-hmm. I start seeing how much of a of a crutch that it was. And I start seeing my progression to the point of where like I went from socially drinking where I would only do it when I'm like because like I'm mad. I'm mad awkward out. Like, and so the main reason I would get a beer is like, I was joking earlier with Ricky Bobby. I didn't know what to do with my hands. So it's just like, yeah. at least with a beer, like I can hold it and like move around. And like, it just seems like I'm a socially do a social dude with that as opposed to just having my hands in my pocket. Like social anxiety is a yeah, motherfucker. Like, and so that was the main reason of starting the drink. But then it got to a point where, you know, I went from two drinks to not just beer having wine and not just having beer and wine but then getting 1800 and at the bar and then it went from that to where i'm going to the abc store myself i was like god dog it got to this point i'm buying this shit like Mm -hmm. just take to the crib and 
the final time was just like I was getting two 1800s. I was getting coolers like 15s and I was running through it. And it was just like I started looking because at that time, like still, still my roommate is my brother, my older brother. And he would have a shot every now. Like he would have a couple shots with me every now and then. We both stopped doing everything. But I was looking at the bottle and I was like, that nigga ain't drinking like I'm drinking. Like, mm-hmm. this is all me. Like, yeah. <laughs> and that's a problem. And then a combination of that with, I was, I just woke up and was just like heaviness. I couldn't even like walk. Like I said, that infection, that's what did it for me. To yeah. where I was just like, it's yeah. a blessing to realize things. Some people don't even realize things until it's too late. Mm-hmm. So. Sad. I've had a lot of cases like that. You know, a yeah. lot of homies like Charlotte has a, um, a big, drug addiction problem in general in particular the area that i used to um chill a lot in the east side i mean every side has its you know demons but like the east side particularly like plaza midwood area and stuff like that it's a lot of heroin addicts out there it's a lot of cats that i've met that um you know would be good one year and then like i've seen drugs take niggas under to the point mm-hmm. where i've lost a lot of homies from drugs even if it isn't um to the point of like they overdose it's situations and cases like my like my other boy where he drunk himself to the point where he didn't put his seatbelt on and went through the windshield. And so it's just like I've seen that effect on so many people to where it was just like I knew if I continued to go down that route, I would have been another statistic. Yeah. And so it came well, I down. I hate you had to endure that, but it's a I don't. blessing to realize. I don't. I don't. I don't hate none of it. Like. Yeah. I don't hate none of it now. Like, I hated it at that moment. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, I hate it, like, you know, um, just like what you would out with. Like, I, I hate that you went through that experience, but at the same time, I'm glad you went through it because it got you um, to get to a point of, um, you know, therapy through your EP, you mm-hmm. know, and, and getting that stuff out in that realm and, and putting together a solid body of work. And so... You hate the stuff at the beginning, but then when you look back on it, you don't like, regret it. Yeah. And then you might meet a homegirl that's going through a similar similar situation like that. Like same with me with like drug abuse. Like I get cats hit me up, like, yo, man, like that's dope. That's been that one year sober. Like, I'm going through it myself, man. Let's work out. Like, you know, like I'm trying to calm down drinking myself. Like, transparency is very big. You know, mm-hmm. like when people see like that relatability, it's just like, you know, it's like Superman taking his cape off. Yeah. And, and like taking a shit. It's just like, yo, I didn't even, you know what I'm saying? Like, Superman, no. like, you're seeing Superman, like, take his cape, like, say say you see Superman, like, saving somebody, and then he just like, oh, shit, like, I gotta go take a shit. Like, if he said that, people be like, damn, Superman a real one, man. Like, yeah. he relatable. No, I posted, um, and this just came to me one day. I had posted up, if you air yourself out, nobody can ever hang you out to dry. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I feel like, I always, whenever I just be real about some stuff, I think about, um, the eight mile cipher, mm. you know, the freestyle when he got to I the end. I am a fucking bum. <laughs> <laughs> but nobody could say anything because he already aired yeah. himself out about mm-hmm. it. So I always try to, I don't know, it might be good, it might not, but I just try to tell my stuff before anybody else can. That's where I am at. <laughs> and you know why I got to that point? Because when I went through my phase of drug, of drug abuse heavy, yeah. um, when I had that overdose, I came, I took a break from going out. And I came back to the neighborhood. I came back to Midwood and started hearing mad stories. Like, Cass was just like, yo, man, I heard this nigga was on crack. Like, on some, like, now, I was out here. Like, I was, it's transparent. I was snowing coke, all that. I was on the bag. And so, it was just like, I was, <laughs> I was getting it in. But the stories you be hearing about yourself, I was like, yo, nigga, like, I was at the crib, dog. Like, it wasn't yeah. that bad. And so, that showed me, though, like. What niggas like? I was like, damn, these niggas and some these were these were cats that I told I had a problem. Like these are cats that I like. I went to for th- like for help. I was just like, yo, man, I got a problem, and they out here telling people my story like that. And so that showed me how shysty people can be. How like knowing the difference between associates yeah. and really truly friends. Like the people that are like really my friends, like they just extended. I don't call them friends. Like they extended family at this point. I either have associates or I got family. Yeah. Sweeter than a gumdrop, thicker than a snicker He said, little mama, I'm just trying to get with you Said he loved my curves and he loved my figure And I get real wild when I'm off that liquor So what were some of your influences growing up? I like a lot of 90s music um, I listened to a lot of Biggie Like all through high school Big. And um, Biggie is like one of my like 
top rappers. I think it's everybody, but Biggie, Tupac, somebody that I think influences my sound the most is Snoop Dogg. Mm. Snoop Dogg. I love my top Snoop Dogg. Yeah. Snoop Dogg, the reason. <laughs> I just feel like such a stand, but the reason why I love Snoop Dogg so much is because Snoop Dogg is just Snoop Dogg. Yeah, man. Yeah. He's just he cool. He know how to be funny when he want to be. It's just he do what he wants to do, and I mm -hmm. like that shit. And I like how he just be like, yeah. <laughs> I just think that the shit he do is just for shizzle, my nizzle. Like that yeah. shit, like nigga. He I mad. Love he you. mad playing with. <laughs> I love nigga, you, nigga. I love you. <laughs> nah, I love Snoop Dogg. That's my yeah. nigga. Me too. <laughs> I was just talking to somebody a month ago because, you know, they've been doing since pandemic. It's evolved now to like it's huge. But remember, Versus started doing like pandemic time. Yeah. Where you had like all these different goats like doing like Versus against each yeah. other. And uh, the Snoop, one of my favorite ones was Snoop Dogg versus DMX one. And um, I remember I rewatched it about a month ago. And me and my friend were talking about just like top fives in general. And I was like, man, you know who I don't hear is in a lot of niggas' top five, but is in my top five? Like, probably West Coast niggas will put him in there. It's Snoop Dogg. Like, yeah. this nigga is in my dead or alive top five. What that nigga did for Death Row and took Death Row to a whole nother level. He put the West Coast, like, Dre had it with NWA, but, like, universally, Snoop Dogg, bro. Snoop Dogg was like the... There's a song, and I can't remember which one by Biggie, but he was like, I just want to sell a million records like Snoop Dogg. Mm -hmm. Snoop Dogg was like the the top, like... He was the imprint. He was the blueprint. Yeah, the blueprint. Like, everybody wanted to be like Snoop Dogg. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it was dope that everybody wanted to be like Snoop Dogg because Snoop Dogg was just being himself. Yeah. And I just feel like Snoop Dogg talked about the stuff he went through, but Snoop Dogg was just Snoop Dogg. And that's why I appreciate that nigga. I feel like I don't know that nigga, but I know that nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I love him. And yeah. he, I just love that man so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's dope that he got um, Death Row back. Yeah. Like he yeah, I just seen that, that a couple days ago. That's amazing mm -hmm. to me. I, I want to meet him one day. Hopefully, I can meet him one day. Yeah, we're putting it out there in the universe. Yeah, I'm know? putting that out because sure. I'll here. probably cry. Whoever meet him first, we got to get the other one to come. <laughs> Yo, I'm going to be like, look. I met him. Come on. FaceTime him or something. Like, Yo, like, get me on FaceTime. Like, Yo. I got Snoop on FaceTime, dog. I love Snoop. Yeah, I'm the same way. Snoop was very influential and influential to a lot of people because it showed people like on a business sense what they did with Death Row and pushing Snoop like that. It showed people a blueprint, particularly like black black entrepreneurs who was doing it at the same. Puff was doing it at the same time, but Death Row blew first. And so it showed them. A image of individuality mm -hmm. like man this guy is painting a picture of like where he's from and like what he's doing to where biggie was already there flow wise and being like a lyrical beast but he got the persona of big papa and mm -hmm. and giving people a a image of himself from that mm -hmm. from like taking it to a whole nother level yeah like that like influences like that took big to a whole nother level where he came with this yeah, I'm big. Yeah, I'm dark skinned, but I'm player with this thing. I'm smooth. Like he, his 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 body language was smooth, just like how his flow was smooth and jazz. Like, and yeah. so like he took that whole persona from seeing individuality from Snoop. Yeah. Because before, if you remember, like even like you, you can go back to the picture with like Pac. He got band. He bandanaed up. He still looked like he on the block. Like you know, like he looked like he was still serving because he kind of one foot in, one foot out. He was still serving cats at that time. Like, but he looked like a street cat to where it's like you seen the transition where he. Had the Kango, like just yeah. flowing and a vibe. Like Snoop influenced a lot of stuff. Snoop influenced Pop going over there. Snoop influenced a lot. And so, like, I put him in my top five because of what he did, not just for the West Coast, but for like a nation. Because, like, at that time, like here in Charlotte, like it was either like West Coast or it was East Coast. Me growing up anyway, because like in my household, it was um, predominantly West Coast. Like, my, my sisters, my brothers, mm -hmm. my brother was a big Pac fan, was a big Snoop fan. So, that's all I was listening to. So, I didn't even really get into, like, like I knew about Biggie, but I was, I literally was acting like I was in that West Coast, East Coast beef. Like, I was just like, <laughs> I ain't fucking with that nigga. Like, you know, like, it's <laughs> death row, nigga. Like, I was like <laughs> you would have thought, I, you would have thought I was from Compton or some shit. And so... I, I was heavily influenced by West Coast culture and West Coast shit. And I like I said, I didn't even get into that until like East Coast stuff until like high school. Yeah. But that um going back to Snoop, yeah. 
Like I can talk about Snoop all day. So that's Same. dope. <laughs> that's dope to um hear somebody else. You the first one on here to like even brought him up. Like I love that man. Wise, you know. So big Snoop. Um female wise, like like any females that caught your attention early on, we was just like Lil Kim definitely cuz I just love Lil Kim cuz I used to listen to um me and my sister used used to be in the car and I used to listen to um Get Money. Mm, and mm. I used to like rap her her um mm -hmm. whole rap and I um I fell in love with her music. Other females mm, I love Nicki Minaj. Nicki's like, uh, a goat. Yeah, what definitely. I think it I think she's just I you high think school. she's underappreciated? Or you think she she gets the credit she deserves? I think she gets the credit she deserves and then some, like as she should, because I feel like she I think she commercialized stuff and she made she made a name for herself that I feel like nobody can ever take from her. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like she's she's an amazing rapper. She's a lyricist. She's yeah. dope. I love her. I like Remy Ma. That's a real thug ass bitch. I like that shit. Mm -hmm. She a cutthroat ass bitch. Mm -hmm. And I Sexy, like that. Sexy but has the, the lyrical but ability cut of a, a nigga. nigga. Yeah. I like that. Like, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. I fuck with that. Not, you got that vibe. You, you think got, I, I yeah. get that cut, cut a bitch, cut a nigga you, vibe? You have the vibe where it's like, you got a tone and how you rap where it's like, you can... You, just like Remy, like Remy could talk about that sexy shit. She could talk about that nigga. I'll get a nigga on you type shit. Oh, that means. And a then lot. you have the persona, <laughs> like you know, like you. And then you a beautiful chick. So it's well, like it's, it's something different. With a, I don't know. It's just something about a chick talking like that. Would be like, God, <laughs> dog. She she bar niggas up like she want to do. Nigga, I cut you type shit. But at the same time, you you still got some heels on and like got your nails done type. It's something about that. Like yeah, just just shows you like the the many mm. talents of like. And the beauty, really, of what women do, like mm -hmm. they can, they can walk and chew gun with the best of these niggas. But at the same time, nigga, I got this French manicure, you know. Like yeah, I, I, I go I toe still, to toe with yeah, niggas. At the same time, like that's that's a dope balance. That's dope to see. And like you said, Kim was like that. I, mm -hmm. I feel like Kim was the blueprint for Nikki, where it's just like I can bar these niggas up, but at the same time, I can get sexy. I can get sexy with it as well. Yeah, you know, like that's a dope combination to have. And. um I don't think Nikki get like I don't think personally I don't think Nikki gets that much credit, but I'm biased because like I look at that that era of like Young Money and um, I feel like they'll get it maybe like twenty twenty real niggas knowing hip hop, but when it comes to those particular three, um, Wayne who I'm about to say anyway Wayne, Nikki Drake, um, it was a lot of hate towards all three of them. It mm -hmm. was a lot, especially particularly with. Drake and particularly with Nicki, um, but they influenced a lot of niggas. Like with their ten Absolutely. year spans, decade span, like niggas know what's really good with that. And yeah. so, I feel like um, that'll come later on down the line. The the respect I feel like because yeah. when you're in the moment, we're still in the moment of Nicki. We're yeah. still in the moment of Drake. Like when you, it's kind of like how I watched the Last Dance, like with um that Michael Jordan documentary. Like I was able to live for that last three peat, but. I didn't realize how dope of a he was that nigga, like mm -hmm. ball playing wise, like how he was like running through these teams um, because I wasn't appreciating that moment. But then when you look back at it, be like, damn, like Drake really been running shit for a decade. Like yeah. he, he really been beasting on these niggas. Like damn, Nikki really did become an icon that was on like Girls Kissing Girls with Gucci Man. She went yeah. from Girls Kissing Girls to like <laughs> moment of life to I really. I think she's being, still in it, so that's yeah, why you don't she, appreciate she, it. She, let up so it's like you know we can't be like oh she was because she still is mm -hmm. and yeah. i think that's what that is yeah that mm -hmm. may have a lot to do with it as well and that's probably why i don't hear it as much because they're still in it yeah. but then i mean you could say like no yeah, no nah, jay ain't still in it really i mean he in it when he want to be but jane i feel like they crown people earlier that's yeah. all like that i feel like some some of them deserve it and then i don't think some of them do not that early, as opposed to other people that are like, like I said, a Wayne or, um, you know, like a Nicki or a Drake. Like they don't crown them as early as mm -hmm. other people because they crowned Hove early. But he's, uh, I mean, he he well deserved it. But at the same time, like I don't know, I still get that. Really, maybe it's because he's from the South. Wayne being from the South, Drake being from Canada, Nicki being a woman. You know, like, 
Not like how they should. Yeah. So. Wayne is like one of my top two. I, I didn't put that in there. I I listen to this nigga shit and be talking to myself like, bro, I can't <laughs> believe that nigga. This nigga is ill. Mm-hmm. I love Lil Wayne. I love that nigga so much. I just, I don't know. I just, music just makes me want to cry sometimes. I just love it so much. Yeah. It's therapeutic. Yes. Yeah. It's therapeutic and it's, it's, it's a language. It's a universal language that can get a lot of different people talking um even if you don't know that language like i've been in concerts with cats you know like i used to just randomly go to um like um reggaeton spots Mm -hmm. and like listen to their music and like i ain't know nothing that dude was saying but like i understood the vibe like i understood the energy i understood the tone of how he was saying and just like that relatability of like feeling that like you still like you still get that even if you don't even if there's a language barrier there like um, music does that for people, which yeah. is dope. And so, uh, yeah, it's therapeutic. I, I'd be nothing without it. You know, it was a way for me. Trust to me, I feel the same way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Let's get into. Um, we know the influences, and then we was the start for you. S- singles or going straight to like the project mode of something like a grits. Like, would you would you, would you say like? You did the you did a couple. Of, well, it was like a freestyle, right? I want to say I want to say. Oh, was that just meeting feels like the feel situation was him seeing you flow on like was it was it Instagram or was it Facebook? Yeah, we met at a party. I think that was definitely the, well. I was doing like freestyles in my car, mm. and um, me and him met at a party, and I had posted a freestyle, and he hit me up. I appreciate him so much because I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for him. I wouldn't be where I'm at if it wasn't for him. Shout out to Phil. Yeah, Yeah, shout out to him. He look out for a lot of people. He deserves. He going to get everything he deserves. And I firmly believe that. And I know that because he that nigga is, I feel like, one of the top producers in the world to me. Yeah. But um, we met at a party and um, I did a freestyle in my car and he hit me up. I came over to his house. He gave me we like scammed through these like skimmed through these beats he gave me a beat and um it was the mistress song that's one of my favorite songs mm. <laughs> oh, it was just like yesterday it feels like yesterday but um i rapped on it and then when i i think i just released stuff here and there little instrumentals and would go to his house and record stuff mm-hmm. and um then i just started working on my project no, I dropped the Christmas song and then I started working on my project and I'll go to his house and we make beats. Mm-hmm. And that's how it started. And so, I've just been doing it ever since. I, I didn't mean about I didn't mean about interrupt you, but so the the Christmas songs came first. And then um even backtracking before that though, when did you feel like you wanted to do it? Like in a sense of like you knew you had this in you to like rap and flow. Like when did that even start in the sense of like before even meeting Phil's because like, can we, can we say, can we, can we say that Phil's production wise is like your Timberland to a degree? Hell yeah. That's the, I'll miss you. That nigga Timberland. Yeah. That nigga, that nigga just be on the keys like this. Like that nigga <laughs> just ridiculous to you, me. I'd be like, what the fuck? Who? Autumn, Autumn kind of said the same thing in a sense. It was like, like, like Phil's does a lot of stuff to where he's like my, he like my tempo. Hell yeah. But like, before that, before meeting him, like with the freestyles, like when did you have that confidence to do that? To like, you know, get, cause that takes a lot of confidence to like, yo, yeah, you know, you, you probably have freestyle outside of a camera, like, thousands of times before you actually really have the confidence to be like you know what i'm gonna let these niggas know i can rap <laughs> so when did you finally have that confidence to like put it out there and show people like yo i can really do this well i feel like what initially started it and it was crazy because i didn't intend for it to happen i would go to like um the hip-hop wednesday nights at yeah. um common i go there fucked up dang that's a throwback that was a good event i used to be fucked up like bitch how are you standing Mm -hmm. and um they would do the little cyphers in the back and i would just come and get fucked up and just go on the mic and i just liked that people was fucking with it Mm -hmm. and i was like i literally wasn't like even trying but i was just rapping like the most nastiest shit i could because that's how i was feeling because i was drunk Mm -hmm. and people was fucking fucking with it and then i started going to um God, what is the name of that? Af- no, what is it called? Um, Nocturnal. Nocturnal. That was that was. I used to have so much fun. Yeah, shout out to Aswell. 
Shout out to Nocturnal. That was an event that um, really highlighted mm-hmm. um, artists in the hip hop scene. You can go there and cipher and network. And that was a good. That was a good Monday mm-hmm. night spot. You know, shout I out to used to go there on. and be on the mic, rapping, talking about a bunch of nothing, <laughs> and then <laughs> people used to fuck with it. So then I started doing the car stuff. And then I met him and then we just started working on stuff. And that's, I think that's where it started was just going to the little ciphers and trying to rap and getting, cause the first time I went, I was rapping and I think I was like a little inebriated and he was like, bro, get her off the mic. And I was like, oh no, I'm coming back. <laughs> who who was like that? Uh, Aswell? No, Fils? Shadow. Shadow? Okay. Um, He was like, get her off the mic. And I was like, oh, nigga, I'll be back next Monday. That's right, because Shadow would be in the back, as well yeah. be in the front. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I came back with some written shit like, oh, hold the fuck up. Mm, don't challenge me, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where it strong. started. <laughs> that's what's oh, up. It feels like yesterday, too. Yeah, man, time flies. I was just thinking about that. I seen Aswell for the first time in like, man, like, Three, maybe three, four years at Snug Harbor. This was probably probably like three months ago. Yeah. And um it, we talked a little bit about that. But just of just like that era. Like I was like, man, like moments like nocturnal, moments like um uh, like after, moments like player made. Yeah. I was telling him, I was like, yo. Niggas need to be documenting this shit. Like, like I hope, like, I know, I know what elevator he got. Like, so I would, like surf, like people that take pictures and stuff like that. But like that whole scene, like, uh, like maybe I'm speaking into existence. Like Charlotte hip hop scene is a hell of a documentary. Yeah. Of just like how it started to where like the process of like these different spots, like like Breakfast Club, like that on like back in the day with that to like the the nocturnal era, mm-hmm. like that was the season to like. Yeah, I mean, you can even put Common Market, like, shout out to, like, Dig, like, because Dig used to work at Common Market, um, was the one who organized that and really influenced them to, uh, like, want to do a Wednesday night hip hop. So, like, you could, I give them even that to, like, doing that. I wish they would bring it back. Maybe one day they will. I you hope know, timing so. is everything. Because I feel like that was a good, I met a lot of people networking from that, like, going yeah. to that Wednesday night thing. And I'm so. just glad I caught, caught everything when I did. And I'm so blessed to have experienced that stuff because, that stuff changed my life. It's crazy how you go into something just wanting to get fucked up and just be a drunk ass bitch, but it started me being a creative and rapping, and I'm very thankful for that. And I hope they bring that stuff back for real. We need stuff like that. Yeah, it's a it's a group effort. Like I was telling people with, um, and I say this all the time, like cities like um like your Detroit, like your like your Atlanta, like. I could go to Atlanta and hear an artist that is not a mainstream Atlanta nigga on the radio and shit will be fire. But I say that to say they support even the underground Atlanta. But it's like this, though. I'm tired of folks, you know what I'm saying? The closed-minded folks, you know what I'm saying? It's like we got a demo tape and nobody want to hear it, but it's like this, the South got something to say. That's all I got to say. It takes a group effort to get to the level, almost the old expression, it takes a village to raise a child. Mm-hmm. The child being Charlotte hip hop, like it takes blogs, it takes podcasters, it takes artists, it takes photographers, the ones that blow, like coming back. And like, it's a group effort to get it to that level. And like, mm-hmm. I feel like we're at a beautiful stage to where, like I said, a five year span, I feel like the people who are not stingy and want it to grow are getting themselves in positions to where it could it could really grow. It could really blossom to something beautiful. But, you know, just like planting some, it takes time. And it's definitely planted. The seeds are planted. Yeah. You know, you know, you got beautiful seeds planted everywhere. You got like people like Loot, you know, shout out to Loot with Dreamville. You got like De Niro. You got um, you know, Hot Boy Shack. Like everybody this generation is like it's it's the the people it's like chess is definitely putting themselves in position to where when you get the other one that's going to blow, like, it's going to be... Because yeah. I feel like the only only reason it hasn't got to the level of what people are expecting is that... And not to say, um, you know, no no disrespect to the baby. Like, shout out to the baby. Because his hard work is what got him to that point. Like, I say that about that nigga been working for a minute. Mm-hmm. Like, I've seen his hard work. I've seen the nigga going to these events back in the day, like, passing out flyers. Um, 
he continued to work. And I feel like, like I tell people all the time, the reason the baby is in the position he's in is because the team that he got, because teamwork made the dream work, mm -hmm. and he just outworked y'all niggas. Mm -hmm. Like, that nigga just never stopped. And, yeah. and, like, part of it is consistency. Consistency is key. And having the right team is key. And so when people have the right team and then be consistent, if mm. whoever that person is, I feel like will be a person who wants to connect to everybody. You yeah. know, like, because I see it. It's, it's in the making. It's just time. And then getting that right dude that's really going to be like, I want, I want like, a young thug. Yeah. I have this debate all the time. Who's better, young thug, or future? Future, of course, Flawless, he does what he does, but I tell people all the time, I would rather be with Thug. Because if you look at all the people that Thug has brought out, mm -hmm. like, and, and when he blew, like, that nigga paid Lil Baby to stay in the studio and not be in the streets. Because mm -hmm. he was like, bro, like, I believe in you. Like, that nigga brought Gunner up. You know what I'm saying? He got keyed up. You know, these people are superstars now. And so, like, he brings people out of his community and turns them into stars. And so yeah. you need somebody like that in that mind frame. And that's how yeah. Charlotte will get to that level as well. Yeah. I feel like, um, that's definitely needed. And I, now that you mentioned that I wanted to shout out my homeboy Twan, um, because he, when I was making my project and it takes people like this, I didn't have a lot of money and I still don't, but, um, <laughs> Struggles I didn't, for all of us. yeah, we, we struggling, but we get through it. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't have a lot of money and I wanted to go to the studio a whole lot. And, um, that's another person, my friend Twan. Um, I met him at common. He would invest his Wait money. Wait a minute. I know Twan from Winston. Twan Island. is that nigga. <laughs> Shout out to Twan. Shout out to Twan, man. He was um, supposed to do the podcast. Like, look, Twan is an angel. Um, he a good dude. Man. He's, He's got an a amazing good person got with a good, good spirit. <laughs> and he, he always, I can always hit him up if I don't have enough money. Cause I am not fronting. I ain't got it like that all the time. Yeah. And um, I'll hit Twan up like, hey, Twan, I need $40. You know, I ain't Kept got it. Out. And he'll send it. Like, just make sure you book it. Send me the song when you're done. It takes people like that to to really help, you know, get you where you need to go. And I, God sent him to me, and I'm very grateful. So I wanted to shout him out. I know that might be off topic. but No, it's, it's definitely, <laughs> definitely on topic. You know? Yeah. All of this is on topic because it takes a village or it takes whatever I was saying earlier. It takes a village to raise a child. Yeah. And, you know, those moments is what we're here for. Mm -hmm. Like those universal love moments, whereas whether it's holding a door for somebody, not physical door, but, you know, metaphorical in that sense as well, too. You yeah. know, like, yo, man, I see your talent. And I believe in you. And he did that with my boy Michael. Like he, I don't know. Oh, you know where Mike. It went. Yeah, I, I know love Mike. Mike. Mike that be singing shout his ass off. Mike. I'm yeah. shouting everybody out today. <laughs> <laughs> this is a shout out show. That's all I do most of the time anyway. Is shout niggas out when people um, bring them to my mind. Be like, yeah, shout out to that nigga. Shout man. out to Mike. Because it's all about giving people their flowers. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm not hesitant to ever. I've never been one to hate. Like even yeah. if I see niggas doing better than me, like it motivates me. Like if anything, I'll ask niggas questions and be like, yo, man, how'd you do this? Like how you get to that point? How you get yeah, to that definitely. point? But I've always been in that mind frame of like, because, and I think it's because I'm born and raised here. I want Charlotte to blow. I mm -hmm. want Charlotte to grow. And that's why I haven't left. That's why I, I decided to stay here because like I've had the situation where it's like, you know, like staying in West Coast and maybe like people telling me like, yo, you should move to New York. Like I was going to move to Brooklyn. And, but it's something that tugs me with Charlotte. And I think what it is is because like, I see the potential of it. I'm from here and I want to be involved in that bubble bust when I know it's going to hit. Cause yeah. when it bust, it's going to bust. And I want to be, uh, even with this, you can look back, y'all going to be doing y'all thing. Phil's you, dag on De Niro, look back and they'll be like, yo man, that dude was the first interviewing these niggas back in the day when they were like mm -hmm. still in the city type yeah. shit. And so it's like, you want to, you want to have your foundation and that'll be a foundation for the next nigga that's, you know, 20 years down the line, he's seen somebody from Charlotte doing podcasts and he like, well, sh if Titus did that, I can do it too, mm -hmm. man. I got a voice. I'll be the new voice. And like, it takes that like community based, like me talking to like a no limit and like him telling me like, yo, bro, this is how you do it. Like, this is how you like, like, interview people like it takes that yeah because if not you're gonna have people being raised that don't know what to do when they get in certain situations and because they didn't have no guidance they ain't had no ogs like they and that's the problem now you got a lot of people because the ogs are not coming back and like giving people advice they're getting into these positions and they don't know how to um 
keep the positions mm -hmm. because like they ain't never had nobody guide them. You got a bunch of young niggas with bread that don't got no guidance. Mm -hmm. And so when they finally do get where they want, they don't care about these old niggas because like them old niggas didn't care about us. And so like, why would I care about y'all when y'all been running the radio for the past 30 years and not put not one Charlotte nigga on unless they paid you to do it or some shit. And yeah. so, you know, like niggas look at shit like that. And so, I say that to say it's dope when you find people like a Twine, you know, like a De Niro, like a No Limit, like a Sporty Ordy, you know, niggas that really want to like see the city grow. Absolutely. That's how it's going. That's how it builds. Yeah. How it should be. Absolutely. I definitely. And I appreciate that nigga with all my heart. He know that though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For sure, for sure. He a good dude. We got to get him on here. Yeah. Grits. <laughs> <laughs> grits. How that come about? You like grits? Um, I, I already know what it stands for, but let, let the audience know what your, like, your alpha. Well, I do grits like grits with cheese. I do. That's the only way I eat it. <laughs> for and sure. a little bit of milk. Mm -hmm. But um, I was listening to, uh, and it's crazy because I would go to Player Maid and um, listen to like the the old school Southern stuff, mm -hmm. and I feel like that influenced grits. Shout out to Elevator Jam. Shout out to him because mm -hmm. going there, listen to that stuff. I used to listen to Webby. I didn't wipe me down. Mm -hmm. I was like, "Fuck it, I need to make some shit like this." Mm -hmm. And um, I just wanted to like shout out to the Southern side of things, like New Orleans, mm -hmm. North Carolina, Atlanta. Even Miami, like, just give the little taste of the South. Yeah. And I just thought about Grits. I was going to name it something else, but I told somebody about Grits, and they was like, oh, that's dope. Mm -hmm. So I just named it Grits, and that's how that came about. Was Phil a part of that? Uh, Phil was part of that as well? Hell yeah. Eight. I think he made eight of the 12 tracks. I think it's, is it 12 or 13? Whatever. He made eight of them. So mm -hmm. he he put his foot in that shit. <laughs> put, put his, his foot, foot in, in it. that shit. As he does with everything, <laughs> uh, man. Absolutely. Yes. He he has so many different like lanes he can step into. Like And that's the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. That nigga is just yeah. amazing. He's, he's an underrated genius, dude. Yeah. Like, what I see who he helps and like what he does, like he that, has an ear for good music too. He knows mm -hmm. good shit. Like and, I know he ain't gonna make me no stupid shit. And an ear for talent. Yeah. Because it's a lot of females that want to rap. And it's a lot of females that do rap. And they don't got it. Like, mm -hmm. they just in it because, like, um, they got they got a nigga in it. And, like, he funding it. <laughs> he don't really, like, I mean, for real. I mean, I'm not trying to be an ass. Like, know, but he okay. don't really believe in it. Like, she probably loves to rap, but she's not good at it. Yeah. Like, some people just don't got it. And, um, you know, practice does make perfect and you can get a certain level. Like, I don't care how I don't care if I'm doing um, practice every day. Like if I'm five, four, it may be really hard for me to get into the NBA. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like certain certain things like you just can't control. Some things yeah. are just God given. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's the same with that. Like I've seen people. I, I am definitely not going to disrespect them and naming them. But I've seen people that's been flowing for like 20 years. And it's still the same. Like it's just like their 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 levels ain't got the same. It's just like it's, you just may not got it. But you, and and not in the sense of like it's not a um, passion thing because I don't care if you're good at it or not. If if you're passionate about it and love it, like be sucky at it and do it. But I'm talking about people in the realm of like getting into the music business and trying to be in the music business, and then yeah. like they don't make it and just like oh man, like these niggas hating on me, like. I don't know, bro. You may not just be good. Like, <laughs> it may just not be it, bro. But, like. Not really, though. I say that to say, like, it takes a good recipe to, like, have somebody that has all of it. And Phils knows that. And he's seen that in you. Because you, like I said, I was, I was talking previously about it. You got all of it. Like, I was listening to you. I was like, oh, okay. You got, no, a, you got a tone where it's like, it draws you in to listen. Mm -hmm. You got the look. You apparently got the pen. Like, and so. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people ain't right for themselves either. Let's call a spade a spade, you yeah. know? So, even if, like, you, you getting, like, it's fine. Like, ain't nothing wrong with that. Like, people writing for you. But to be able to write your own hooks or, you know, um, you know, write your own verses, 
be a part of that process, mm -hmm. that's big and will be very effective down the line. You know, when you deal with like stuff like publishing and stuff, man, you know, when we start getting into the music business, that's big. You, know, yeah. you, you might write for another female. I would love that. Honestly, mm -hmm. I really would. That's one of my goals is to write for somebody who is notable. I'm putting that into the universe. This is recorded. I feel like that gives it an extra. Yeah, extra boost. Like, I can go back to this shit. Like, I said it and it happened. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I think it's, I think, I don't know. I appreciate people who don't write their stuff. I just appreciate anybody creative, but I appreciate people who took the time to, because it takes a lot to write something. Mm -hmm. And people and don't realize that. Yeah, and it takes a lot of guts to put yourself up. Anybody who's a creative in Charlotte, just in general, I I commend them because mm -hmm. with creating stuff, you're putting it open to be criticized. Yeah. Cause mm -hmm. people are going to talk shit if they don't like it. And you just have to be like, fuck it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> if they don't fuck with it. They don't fuck with it. It's stuff that mm -hmm. I don't put out. People don't fuck with it. It's just, you might put something out and everybody flock to it. You might put something out and nobody wants to listen to it. It's just a constant it's like a, it's kind of like a mind game, but when you do something you love, you don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. And you have to remember that because yeah. like, I feel like that was my biggest thing was mm -hmm. getting over that hump of like criticism, like with anything, whatever I did, whether it was like looks I was going through, whether it was um, music, whether it was this, like everybody it's 7 billion people on the earth, bro. Like everybody ain't going to fuck with it. Yeah. But you might get, you know, like a lot of my people, like when it comes to this podcast, the city fuck with it. But some of the people in the city don't. But I may get people from like Switzerland fucking with it. You know, yeah. like you, you start looking at different Spotify stuff. Like I get people from like Switzerland, Switzerland listening to this, UK listening to this. Mm -hmm. And so like I say that to say your your um fan base can come from anywhere, you mm -hmm. know, depending on the era that we're in now, like the, the Internet, social media era, era like. You see some of these people that they got the biggest just from niggas that are in Montana somewhere that's fucking mm -hmm. with their shit. And so I think that's what gave me the boost as well in realizing, A, I can't please everybody. No. And B that's impossible. My my base may not come from may not come from um Charlotte. You know, like I'm from here. Charlotte will be in me wh whether my base is here or not. You know, your base may not come from Charlotte. It may come from Dagon, Hawaii. It may come from Miami, Atlanta. Like, who knows? You you may not like in the old scripture, like a prophet don't get respect in this city. And so, like, I've gone through that phase with everything from from love to dealing with the politics of like dealing in, um, you know, um, music. Like mm -hmm. a lot of the times, like some of my biggest relationships I look back from like them women weren't even from Charlotte. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> I either they either came to Charlotte and and they moved here freshly and I just will happen to meet them at that yeah. time or I met them online and we we met and I ended up staying with them or they ended up coming moving to Charlotte. You know they weren't born and raised in Charlotte mm -hmm. and I used to think that back in the day. I'd be like, dang, like these Charlotte girls ain't showing me no love. What's going on? But it really was like timing. You know, like sometimes it be like that. Like yeah. sometimes it may it may not come from your base, your home. It may come, like I said, it's 7 billion people on this earth. Yo, your new nigga may be from Charlotte. Your new nigga may be from Montana. Like, you you know, you just yeah. never know. Or your new partner, I don't, I don't know what. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. You, you, Shout out to yeah. the lesbians, though. I ain't uh -huh. against it, but yeah. I need no. some dick. Your new... <laughs> oh, she said, she said this, is, this is dick over here. <laughs> this team, this team dick. <laughs> but and Put that out there. Yeah, but I said that. I didn't know the situation. So. But and nothing wrong with that, you know, like. Yeah. It may come from anywhere. That's what that's what I'm saying. Like it'll it'll come when it comes. Like you you said something earlier and I can't remember. It was like dealing with like God or what were you saying? Like it was before like it it'll come when it comes or something like that. Yeah, dealing. God lets God um will put you in positions when it's time. Sometimes I feel like with me, you know, my I was just talking to somebody today and I was telling them, you know, I don't and then people might look at this as terrible, but I allow myself time to explore my life and figure out where I'm headed and go through things so that I have things to write about. And I don't, mm -hmm. I don't pressure myself when I'm not feeling it. Mm. And yeah. I feel like sometimes you just got to allow things to happen the way they're supposed to happen. And I don't know, just enjoy the, enjoy the moment. Just enjoy being able to, somebody wrote me something on Instagram the other day and they were like, yo, I love your music. 
somebody I don't even know. Mm. And I was like, I love your music. It makes me think, and it just puts me in a different mindset. And it, I listen to it every day, and it's just like, if you could even do that with just one person, that's yeah. a blessing, you know. And you have to, you have to enjoy the moments that you're in before you elevate to greater heights, if that makes sense. So I just enjoy the fact that. Somebody listen to the shit. It might be somebody in damn Hong Kong. They listening to the shit. Yeah. They might mm-hmm. be the only person to listen to it, but it's changing their life. And mm-hmm. I just, I just see the blessing in things. Yeah. And that's what I had to do um, is really sit back and look at the bigger picture and look at the blessings of things. Mm-hmm. Look at who really is loving me, who really is, you know, riding for me. Like who, who am I affecting my nephew and stuff like that, that, really rely on my input and so when you do that and like really look at what you got um it makes everything a lot more smoother yeah it's just like you you become grateful and blessed because a lot of people don't even have that yeah you know like i got a mom i got a pops you know like some people lose their people early you know like me and my pops we weren't on the best of terms early on in life but we to a point now he like like top three niggas i talked to it was just like as as we got older as men like i start seeing like Cause I I went through a phase where I was just like I don't need that nigga for nothing like you know, we get old like it is what it is nigga, but I start seeing how you need that 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 fatherly input even especially being a black man like you still need that that advice of like knowing like my history like I'm really big on like being a historian of my family and like knowing where we started where we came from and mm-hmm. it, it's it's only certain things I can know from talking to him. Yeah. So like knowing generational curses, like what did you deal with? Oh, you suffered from alcoholism too. Oh, uncle, uncle, so and so suffered from it. Mm-hmm. Like so, this is a this is a a timeline, family thing, a bloodline thing that I need to nip in the bud here. And so like you only know how to battle certain things if somebody gives you the blueprint. Yeah, so. absolutely. And that's you know we all have our childhood trauma that we deal with, but um, I've just lately been like healing through some of the things I went through and I realized who I am today is so much. I don't know why I'm getting emotional. I'm very emotional. That's fine. I'm sorry. That's fine. <laughs> who I am today is because of my parents. Shout out to the parents, yo. It takes And I feel like we harbor like ill feelings towards things we've been through in our life, but we have to realize that at the end of the day we wouldn't be who we are without our parents. And me being able to rap, I was listening to one of my songs the other day and I just started crying because I'm a Jamaican mm. and I just heard the Jamaican in me. <laughs> and I feel like that's that comes from my dad. Mm. And me being able to rap comes from my mom because Thank she was you, a poet. So, um... I'm sorry. <laughs> you good? I don't even know how this happened. You I'm good, girl. Oh, we, we getting into it. I mean, it comes yeah. with conversation. Conversation is all about stuff like this. Being transparent yeah. and you know, opening up and you know, like I do that all the time. It's plenty. Of, it's plenty of times where I've had like going through certain moments of like just now, like with my pops and like you know, my pops had a rough year. Like been battling cancer all through this year, mm-hmm. and so it's like I, I would think about that. Like as I get older, I look at mortality. And be like, dang, like all the stuff I survived, and then like, you look at my pops that surviving this and but fighting and, and keeping the faith in God, and I'm like, man, don't take him at this moment where I feel like our relationship has gotten that strong now. But it made me think I would be at peace with it because we didn't end on bad terms. Yeah. And so like, I see the full circle effect of that as well, where mm-hmm. it's like, God forbid, he he. He he um dies. I mean, he gonna survive this because like he's gotten good results now and yeah. all of that. But at the same time, it showed me how it was just like, man, like that would be crazy. Like I get to this point where like I'm in a good place with him and then like he takes me away from him. But at the same time it's a gift because like I, it made me be grateful of the where I got the good stuff about me from. Yeah. You know, like knowing my history of like, you know, really talking to him and knowing like like I told KB, I didn't know my pops was in this. I knew he was in the military, but I didn't know he was in the special ops until like this year. Like just sitting down and really having conversations, and so yeah, it makes you like you have. It makes you have the moments that you just did. Like be yeah. more appreciative, appreciative of where you came from, and like all the stuff that he went through. Um, you know, to get into the point of like helping, trying to raise me, and like well, yeah. my mom, especially my my mom. Um, when they when they broke up. Like she 
put all of us on her back and mm-hmm. like was working and doing her dad on thing. And so we've gotten to a point where she, she's like my best friend, not to say she was never not, but she worked so much when I was younger. We didn't really have, we didn't really talk about nothing. Yeah. But now as you get older, you have these conversations, you, you know where you're from. And like I said, it makes you fuck with your parents even more, you know, yeah, because <laughs> everything you get is from them. Mm-hmm. You know, some things you do unconsciously. It's like, that's, that's my dad mm-hmm. and me. That's my mom and me. So you have to have gratitude and be thankful. You know, everything is not perfect, but there's beauty and struggle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's beauty and struggle. And I, I can only imagine seeing it from the other side. Like, I'm not one to want kids because that's just me. Like, two inches, <laughs> <laughs> two inches <laughs> on. Like, you're honest. Yeah, I mean, oh. two inches, yeah, two, two inches on, I'd be a dope uncle and stuff like that. But I get it. Like, I didn't. I didn't get it like back in the day. Like I'd be like, man, it's like even when it was just like six billion. Like I'm like, man, all these people on the earth. Like why are we still having kids? But as you get <laughs> as you get older and like see like my brother like who has kids and you know I get older and like experience like the relationship with my mom and my and my pops. Like I get it. Like I understand why people have kids and even even if I never have any. I I enjoy seeing the process of seeing somebody, even like my nephew, who I literally seen on my bed as an infant to where he's like 18 now Mm -hmm. and and just like going through the process of learning and and having talks with him about stuff like as an adult. Like, yeah, that's something where it's just like, man, like that's like I love that nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I loved him as an as as a youngster. But like when you when you get older and like like me and my brother, like. Your relationships change as you get older, either for the good or for the bad. But when they when they get better for the good, like me and my brother weren't on the best of terms. But now that nigga is literally my best friend. Like we roommates. Like that was growth of like seeing like. And he said that. Like I remember him t- talking to me and was like, "Yo, man, I know people think like I I hated you, but I loved you." He was like, and and in moments like this, like I used to like be like, I can't wait for my brother to get older, and we actually talk. Like you know, like. We went through like the sibling rivalry when we were younger and stuff mm. like that. But in the back of his mind, he couldn't wait for moments like this. How many of us have them friends? Ones we can depend on. Let's let's finish up with like wrapping up about like what are what are the next stages for you? What do you see in your career for for just like this season in in twenty twenty two? Like because. You you got already some great EPs out. You got good body of work. Um, what's the next stage for you that you see that you want to do creatively? Um, Is it music even like you know like because we know we know you got the bars, but like wh- what other avenues do, do you may want to touch? I definitely want to get into producing a lot more, which it takes consistency, and that's kind of my problem. But I can admit that. Yeah, same here. That was my biggest struggle. It's a big struggle is being consistent, not getting caught up in life. I feel like what I'm working on next is just some, I want to do another album, but I just want it to come from a place of just pure honesty and pure rawness because I feel like God puts you through. Well, he doesn't put you through things, but he allows you to go through things so that you can overcome them and share the experience with somebody else mm-hmm. and impact their life so yeah. that they can learn from it. And I want my next project that I do to be very open, honest, and authentic. And I see myself creating a new type of sound. And that's something I'm really passionate about. I don't know, like I said, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm really just a bitch that be getting a notepad and writing shit. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not strategic with this shit, clearly. <laughs> but um, You're doing a good job not knowing. Yeah, I'm trying. Look, I try. But um, I could try harder, but I try. Uh, I just see myself creating a a sound. I don't know where it will derive from. I really have no fucking clue, but I do want to create my own type of sound. I have a sound, but I want to I want to like explore it more. Mm. Yeah. So that and um that's really it. I don't see myself I would love to act one day, but I really just I love music so much. I just feel like that's I I just I'm content in just music. Mm. That's all I really want to do is just do it. I want to do it more mm. and have more time to do it. Yeah, 
continuing to just grow and master your craft. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that for you for sure. Like I'm rooting for you. Um, you definitely been had a fan in me is in the, the fandom is even bigger now because like, I understand like who you are as a person even more. Well, I you appreciate know? So it. It's definitely dope to meet you. And like, I see you touching every Avenue, putting your finger in a lot of pots, you know, yeah. from modeling to dag on hip hop. So like you, you can definitely touch a lot of different pots. And so, well, thank you. That means a lot to mm -hmm. me. I didn't, Intend to come on here crying. Hey, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't my intention. It, I all, cry all the time. We we about being authentic here and being yourself, and so you know it come, it happens. You know yeah. you have those moments. You know mm -hmm. we here with you. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate it. For sure. He done came with the tissues. So I feel respected <laughs> and loved. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Give people like your your socials before you get out of here. Ways to like reach you. Instagram is Nadia Info. I deleted my Twitter I out of just too. frustration. I just had a frustrating moment. Like, Fuck that shit. Me too. I, might, <laughs> I was like, I'm done with this. I hate y'all. I'm done with y'all, <laughs> niggas. But I might get it back. And um, I'm on YouTube. You can look me up, Nadia Ninfo. I don't have... It's just Instagram, really. Word. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> streaming, Um, same thing, Nadia Ninfo. Y'all look up her, her projects on streaming platforms. Yeah. Dope. Nice to meet you, yeah. You too. This is as of late.